Welcome back. You know, uh, Temp was snow capped today. Yeah. The weather is turning, and now we get to talk about true fall football weather. I got the hoodie on, you know. Yeah. I'm still going with the shorts because my legs don't get cold. It's just upper body. <laughs> You've always been uh, resilient that way. I have, yeah. yeah. The toughness is in the legs. How does it feel, though? The, uh, the season does feel to be changing a bit out there. Yeah, I mean, I, it, after leaving Laramie in September, that was beautiful. I mean, that, uh, we talked about it after the game, and um, it was a cool experience. Um, a little hostile with the crowd, but uh, I mean, we, it was cool. We had some really cool interactions with the fans afterwards, too. And um, yeah, I wish them the best of luck, man. But it was a lot of fun to get back to that stadium. It's way different than what we remember yeah. when, when, when we were younger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I, I was really pleased and happy with the way the guys played the game. Yeah, uh, you, you get a lot of support when you're the only game in town as, as Wyoming football is there in that state. But then, of course, BYU fans always show out. and It's a drive for a lot of fans, and so a lot of royal blue in the stands. And it was a great night. Yeah, and they were, I mean, the fans are awesome uh, no matter where we are at. But uh, in, in, in Wyoming, it was really cool. I mean, I thought it was really um, significant that, you know, K-pop, he's from Wyoming. That, Evanston, yeah. That we were able to get that kickoff return, and, and he's been planning that. He's been waiting on that. And, just happened to be in his home state, so um, I know he was fired up and excited about that. And um, things are starting to move. We're starting to see some really good improvement. I, I like the way the team. I like the trajectory that we're on, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this game this Saturday. You know, when you brought him back uh, as a special teams coordinator, he knew how long it had been since BYU you had a kickoff return for touchdown. He thought last year would be the year, and in fact, Keelan did break one at West Virginia, but it came back on maybe a phantom flag and then they finally got one this year to stick it was fun to see yeah I mean that one I well we, we learned from it you know and, and I think uh, you, if you watch the the kickoff the return team they're really careful not to uh, block in the back and not to get a holding call I mean that I think maybe that's a little bit of, of the hesitation is, is for us to break one and Keelan has been struggling with, with some of the returns before that one and uh, we just told us to have faith and just trust it man you got to trust your, your brothers to block for you and Everyone's got to do their 111th, and, and when your time comes, it's going, to, it's going to hit like that. And I think I think this can really get some momentum for us in the return game and, and with special teams. Uh, we can get the most out of that group. I think it'll be really good. And I, I think Kelly Papinga, he's, he, he's done a great job at, at game planning and scheming so that we can always put our, our special teams at an advantage. We'll see highlights of that return in a bit. So you finished the non-conference slate, and this kind of looks like the formula now moving forward, right? You, you play an FCS. Uh, G6 team, let's call it now, in a P4. You had the FCS at home against Southern Illinois. Uh, the, P the Power Conference team was SMU on the road, and then you played the, the group of five or group of six team, Wyoming, away. And at next, next year's schedule is set. You've got a Portland State for your FCS. You've got East Carolina for your G6, and you've got Stanford for your P4. So have you found the formula you plan to go forward with? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the key is what we, we've been focused on is that you respect your opponents and you plan for – not looking at the level of play that they are, but looking at the opportunities that you have. You have 12 guaranteed opportunities to play this game. And so um, really want to be, be at our best in all 12. I felt like last, last week was our best game of, this, of the year until we play Saturday. And if we keep, keep working that way and keep improving and fixing some of the mistakes, um, the ones that are very fixable and, and work on it this week, today was a great practice for us. And so I think the guys are motivated to, to keep that momentum going. And, and finding ways to keep improving. And, and that was, that was a, another example of the guys believing in each other and having faith in what we're doing. And, and that, that's what you do off the field. It, it transfers to what you do on the field. And I think they're, they're really well connected. I, I like the way this group is, is working. Do you remember how you felt or what you felt going into your first Big 12 game in Lawrence last year as opposed to how you feel heading into your Big 12 opener this year with K-State? Any differences? Yeah, I mean, when you, when you watch the film, you could see the, the, the style of play um, obviously, we, we see that there's there's a lot of great athletes, and it's a ranked team. So Kansas State, really well coached team, but they're ranked, and you can see that they're talented. Um, and so our guys know that the the room for error is very is very small, and so uh, we need to be on top of all our things. And that's from the coaches, and from all three phases. We need to play clean football, and I think we'll be in a really good spot. I, I have a really good feeling about the way our team works and the way they improve. This is a, a different team than what what people are anticipating from last year, but. That's okay. We, we just want to show it, and I don't really want to talk about it too much other than just getting out there and getting the, getting the work done. But these guys have shown that they're going to get better every week, and, and the coaches are, are – we're all in the same boat. It's not like the coaches have all the answers. We're trying to get all this stuff figured out as we go along. Now that you've been through it, how does it feel to be a Big 12 football team? in your Yeah, career? it feels great. I mean, I mean, we went to Laramie, and you kind of just feel this 
in the air, there's just people know that we're we're a different looking team than than, than what they're used to. And I mean, Texas Tech went into Laramie last year around the same time and they lost the game. Yeah. You know, and so I think our guys, the mindset, their focus was was uh, razor sharp, and we went in there and. and it wasn't pretty always, but like I can't complain. I didn't feel like there were, we weren't in control. Just felt like we could have been, we could have capitalized and done some things earlier. But um, I like the way the guys finished the game, and I like the, the, the just sticking with everything, that sticking with the game plan, and, and it, it just worked out the way that I wanted it to. And that's us coming out with the victory and, and feeling comfortable and getting some young guys some reps. We'll let you talk about our highlights as we take a look at them for a second consecutive season. BYU has swept its non-conference slate. The Cougs got to 3-0 and with a 34-14 win at Wyoming on Saturday night. Let's look back at some of the highlights presented by Waystar. The Cougs and Cowboys at War Memorial for the first time in 14, 15 years. BYU's first offensive possession does end with a pick at the goal line, but a three and out, a punt out of the end zone, and it was a short field for BYU, and here's what the Cougs did with it. Yeah, great, great plan right here by A-Rod and, and the coaches, and um, you know, we were marching the ball into that interception, so uh, they put, put them on the one yard line, so if, if you're gonna throw one, I guess you can throw it with pins them deep. Chase Roberts had a big night, one of his six catches for 129 yards on the evening. At the end of this drive, Cody Epps gets his first touchdown in almost two calendar years. Good to see him back in the That's end zone. That's awesome. And then and you talked about Chase with the catch, but Chase on the block right there, he does all the little things right. You can see him holding off the guy. I mean, as long as Cody just keeps his feet, we're going to be fine to get the score here. But um, he might have been a little too excited. Sometimes it takes feet and a hand to get into the end zone. Not too many big plays for Wyoming on this night. Uh, that was the longest uh, completion of the night to a tight end who got his first catch of the evening on that play. Evans Babot is a big fella. He got a rushing touchdown. It was a seven point game there. But then uh, toward the end of the half, Jake Resloff would find Chase Roberts, and soon after, Will Farron would find the range for a field goal. And again, you get to use Will late in the half to give yourself a, a boost heading into halftime. Yeah, I, felt, I mean, we felt good about moving the ball. Just like to see more touchdowns and field goals, but uh, we, we know we can count on Will to get it done. All right, you won the toss, and we know you always defer, and so you deferred to receive the second half kickoff, and this was how the second half began. Yeah, just really happy that Keelan trusted it, and. and you could see he was just running a little bit with more, uh, more determination to make that cut, and it worked out perfectly. And I mean, he did run out of gas a little bit, so a little bit more conditioning for him. We're going to do that again. Yeah, but a good place to run out of gas is at the goal line. That's so, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 24 to seven, BYU with the lead. Little special play here, and Pokai gets involved with a throw back to Retzloff, and Jake goes downfield to chase another great grab. Yeah, that, that was a wonderful catch. Just, yeah. I was telling him not to not to stand over the guy, but Chase does, he's not like that. Chase, I think, I mean, he's always done things the right way, and I, I think he was just really excited about that catch. He should one, be one sack on the night for either team. Number 17, getting number 17, Jack Kelly with the uh, the TFL. Evan Smoboda is a is a big fella. He's 6'5", 245. Yeah, and he got rid of the ball early most of the time, and so we weren't really able to get. Uh, get him in the backfield, but it's okay. We felt like we made some plays and got some TFLs and held the run game to a minimum. Keanu Hill is a tough player. Didn't make the catch, took a hard hit. They reviewed it for targeting. It was confirmed. And I think thankfully, uh, Cody's, or rather, Keanu's okay. Yeah, he's tough, man. He, he cleared all, all the protocols, so he'll be ready to go this weekend. Jake Retzloff is BYU's leading rusher on the season. Almost had a 100-yard night in Laramie, but a, a penalty took back one of his longer runs. This is a pretty good run, though, of 28 for Jake. Yeah, just, just I like the ball being close to his chest right there, and uh, we can we know we can count on him to run the ball if we need him to. After a Great holding play, here. backed up a bit, and he finds Darius Lassiter. Yeah, I mean that Jake's a good athlete in the pocket, and um, yeah, I'm glad Darius didn't take that dance too far. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> BYU had one takeaway on the night. It was Evan Johnson getting his first career pick. Nice play. This kid's done a great job of getting himself ready to play, and he's he's had his first starts this year, and um, he the. The sky's the limit for him and his abilities. You see the Cougars were cruising at 34 to seven and the reserves came in the game and against those reserves with the first stringers from Wyoming still in, they score the final points, your final score, and this one ends up being 34 to 14. Celebrate going to three and oh. Yeah, that wasn't my fastest jog, by the way. <laughs> you were around the 40 there. Yeah, just stop, stop putting the camera on me when I'm trying to jog across and hurry and <laughs> shake hands. So that's... Okay, note, <laughs> note to the camera operators and the editors out there. All right, uh, final stats, you take a look at some of them there. Uh, BYU more than doubling up uh, the Cowboys. Uh, the defensive numbers are outstanding for you guys through three games. Yeah, re really happy with the way the defense is playing. 
really consistent and we're using a lot of bodies. So we're rotating a bunch of guys. And, and part of the development of the defense is getting those young guys the reps. So that, that last drive, I think it went 70 yards. So, I mean, they got a lot of their yardage on that last drive. And, but we had a lot of guys in there making mistakes. I mean, we had guys that, that stumbled and fell when they would have had an interception, things like that. It's, it's, it's tough to, to, to sacrifice some, some uh, yards and things like that, but it's going to pay off in the long run for us. And it also, in the short run, helps keep some of your mainline players healthy. Fewer reps means less chance for injury. Yeah, and then just keeps, I mean, all the guys that are working and practicing, uh, we know that we can count on them. A lot of them are just one play away from being in the game. And if, if, if you know, tragedy should strike and guys get banged up and hurt, we know that we can count on our depth. Been a good three games, though, for the most part. Uh, no real serious injury. Sure, you want to get your running backs back as soon as possible, but that's going to be a committee for a bit. But for the most part, I think uh, from strength and conditioning to, to the way you guys have, have prepared for the season, it's been a good opening month. Yeah, and, and I, it just feels different. It feels different than the other, than last year even. Um, just the, the presence on the field and, and the way we, that we, we controlled games, it just felt better. And, and we had a, a close one with SMU, and... And we know that we, we can improve and do things better in, in, in all three phases, but uh, we're, right, we're right around the right. corner from getting that done. And, and I'm looking forward to, to making it that happen to, in, at home. It's good to be, I mean, we, we've been back to back weeks on the road. Yeah. So it's good to be back home and, and what a great time to do it. We welcome a ranked team into our home and, and, and let's see what happens late night in Provo. You are the only Big 12 team that has a 2-0 road record right now. So it is nice to be back home for sure.